A tsunami is something you cannot run from or hide from, and it is quite difficult to forecast one. However, only if a natural disaster is in question. Discover which extremely powerful submarine can unleash a nuclear tsunami in today's episode. Submarines have evolved into one of the most powerful and strategically versatile assets in naval arsenals worldwide. Their unique ability to operate beneath the waves, coupled with advancements in technology and tactics, has elevated their lethality to unprecedented levels. The interwar years saw substantial improvements in submarine technology. The shift from diesel electric propulsion to nuclear power in the mid-20th century revolutionized submarines' operational capabilities. Nuclear-powered submarines boosted their extended endurance, allowing them to remain submerged for months. This innovation catalyzed the arms race during the Cold War as nations sought to establish dominance in the realm of underwater warfare. The advancement of submarines continues even today, and some may even have evolved to the point where they can be a threat to the whole of humanity itself. A nuclear weapon that Russia appears to have created is capable of slipping under the ocean floor before detonating along the coastline to overwhelm the area with what one official called radioactive tsunamis. Likewise, the High Law Tsunami drone system, which North Korea just unveiled and put to the test. It is intended to detonate submarines to produce enormous radioactive waves. The official news outlet of North Korea, KCNA, reported that this nuclear underwater attack drone can be deployed at any coast and port autoed by a surface ship for operation. Let's explore the top five submarines that could cause mega tsunamis in just a span of seconds. Pilgrim, behold Russia's monster submarine, the powerful Typhoon-class ballistic missile submarine from Russia is currently the largest submarine in the world. Malachite Design Bureau, based in St. Petersburg, has unveiled a plan for a massive submarine that can transport 170,000 to 180,000 tons at once. That is significantly more than any previous submarine's volume. The submarine tanker would dwarf the Typhoon at 1,180 feet long and 230 feet wide. It is approximately 574 feet longer and 75 feet wider than the former. Therefore, it will be larger than the Typhoon by a factor of more than six. It would require at least three nuclear reactors, each producing 30 megawatts, to move this incredible bulk. It could move forward at 17 knots, which is only marginally less than the speed of conventional tankers. The crew would be small by submarine standards, only 25 to 28 people, as it would not be a combat vessel. The Typhoon Class Project 941 Akula Class Submarine The Typhoon Class Submarine has two parallel main hulls and five inner hulls that are arranged inside a superstructure. Sound-absorbing tiles cover the superstructure. There are 19 compartments total, including a strengthened module above the main hulls behind the missile launch tubes that house the main control room and an electronic equipment compartment. 20 RSM-52 intercontinental, three-stage solid propellant ballistic missiles are kept aboard the submarine. In front of the sail, between the main hulls, are the two rows of missile launch tubes. 10 independently targetable multiple re-entry vehicles MIRVs with a 100 kiloton nuclear warhead each make up each missile. Inertial guidance with stellar reference updating is used. 8,300 kilometers of range with 500 meters accuracy CEP. The Mikhaev Design Bureau created the missile, which weighs 84,000 kilograms when it is launched. NATO refers to it as the SSN-20 Sturgeon. Dmitry Donskoy successfully conducted two flight tests of the SSN-30 Bulova, a new solid fuel intercontinental ballistic missile being created for the Russian Navy, in September and December 2005. With a total of 22 anti-submarine missiles and torpedoes of various types, Typhoon is equipped with two 533mm torpedo tubes and four 630mm torpedo tubes. In the upper portion of the bow, between the hulls, is the torpedo room. 
Mines can also be planted using torpedo tubes. With such force, it's not wrong to call this submarine an unstoppable tyrant in the sea. Any foe it meets is destined for destruction. The Arcturus submarine. The Arcturus is the most modern submarine concept unveiled by the renowned Russian ship design company Ruby Marine Machinery Central Design Bureau. The new vessel, Arcturus, is a radical design and is named after the brightest star in the Northern Hemisphere. The design's sloping outer hull and sloping lines on the sides are what make it stand out the most. It resembles a contemporary low observable aircraft in that it has a spine that extends the entire length of the side. By definition, submarines are stealthy by design. The Arcturus design, on the other hand, took things a step further by including a sloping outer body. This is consistent with concepts used to block incoming active sonar sound waves in other nations. The submarine is equipped with 12 missile silos. Ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads can be launched from these silos, which appears to be the primary objective. However, it is demonstrated that one of the launch tubes has a launch and recovery mechanism for a medium AUV. This denotes flexibility of use. Compared to current ballistic missile strategic nuclear submarines SSBNS, 12 launch tubes are fewer, but other submarine manufacturers are moving in the same direction. The Belgorod submarine, the world's longest known submarine, which its manufacturer describes as a research vessel, but which others claim is a platform for espionage and perhaps nuclear weapons, has been delivered to the Russian Navy. According to experts, it is based on a lengthened version of Russia's Oscar II-class guided missile submarines, which were designed with the intention of eventually housing the first nuclear-armed stealth torpedoes and intelligence gathering gear in the world. The Belgorod is currently the longest submarine in the ocean, measuring more than 184 meters 608 feet, even longer than the ballistic and guided missile submarines of the Ohio class operated by the US Navy, which measure 171 meters 569 feet. The Belgorod's mission distinguishes it from all other nuclear-powered submarines in the Russian fleet, as well as from all other nuclear submarines in operation worldwide. The nuclear-capable Poseidon torpedoes, which can be launched from hundreds of miles away and are intended to evade coastal defenses by moving along the sea floor, will reportedly be carried by the sub, according to TASS. Officials from the US and Russia have stated that the torpedoes could carry multiple megaton warheads, generating radioactive waves that would render large portions of the target coastline uninhabitable for decades. The K-27 submarine, Project 645, which evolved from Project 627, only has one attack submarine, known as K-27. Similar to the US, the Soviet Union tested cutting-edge technologies frequently before they were widely used. Two liquid-cooled VT-1 reactors are installed on the K-27. The K-27 is a design that has never been used on Soviet submarines, so it is more of a science experiment than an attack submarine. But what's concerning about this submarine is not its own prowess, but the danger it left as a legacy after it sank. One of the two VT-1 reactors experienced trouble on May 24, 1968, while a spy mission was being conducted at the North Pole. As a result, the power supply to the ship dropped sharply from 87% to 7%. Gamma radiation increased in the reactor compartment at the same time. Steam and poison gas can also escape the reactor and enter other chambers. The disposal of K-27's liquid metal-cooled reactor which held a sizable quantity of radioactive materials, including nuclear fuel, was the most worrying part of the sinking. There was a chance that radioactive contamination could seep into the surrounding marine environment when the submarine was scuttled, making the place incredibly radioactive. You won't want to end up in that place by accident, or you'll probably won't even know how you died. Having said that, what are your thoughts about radioactive tsunamis? Share your thoughts in the comment box below. And please subscribe to Weather Collapse if you want to know more and be updated on the latest news about natural calamities or disasters happening all over the world, and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video.
Thanks for watching.